Good morning students. This is your English teacher Shutishmita Chatterjee. Students, today we are going to read the best Christmas present in the world. Chapter 1 from Honey Dew. This beautiful piece of prose is written by Michael Morpurgo. Look at this picture students. What you can see? Different gifts. Now students, you know that Christmas is such an occasion where we receive different gifts. So, over here in this story, we are going to see a woman who has received a gift or a present is considered by her as best in the world. Now we are going to see what kind of gift or present it is and why it is being given on the occasion of Christmas Eve. Moreover, why it is considered as best in the world. Now, before we delve into the text, now let's see something about Michael Morpurgo. The award-winning children's writer Michael Morpurgo was born in 1943 in St. Albans, Hertfordshire. After deciding to leave the army, he took up teaching and started to write. He left teaching after 10 years to set up farms for city children with his wife, wanting to create wonderful and memorable experiences for city children to help them in self-discovery. His famous works include War Horse, which is written or basically which was written in 1982. Kensuke's Kingdom, 1999, Private, Peaceful, 2003 and many others, five of which have been made into films. Aside from children's books, he also writes his own screenplays and liberty for opera. Now, do you know the meaning of the word liberty? Liberty means vocal work or texts for opera. Now students, please focus on the introduction. The lesson, the best Christmas present in the world, recites a Christmas story in the midst of a war. It reflects upon the longing of the soldiers to reunite with their families. On the other hand, it also throws light upon the longing of the families of the soldiers. One such wife, Connie, a hundred and one years old lady, whose husband was a soldier in the British Army, misunderstood her visitor to be her husband Jim, who had not returned from a war and she named the so-called reunion the best Christmas present in the world. So basically she had not met her husband but a stranger whom she had misunderstood as her own husband and the so-called reunion was 
known or was called by her once as the best christmas present in the world actually the letter that he had gifted her was considered by her as the most precious and something which is best in the world so let's start the text the best christmas present in the world i spotted it in a junk shop in bridport a roll top desk so the very text starts when the writer visits a junk shop in bridport and that is for getting something so he saw over there a roll top desk a desk which has a slight curve on it on its top the man said it was early 19th century an oak so that very desk was of early 19th century and it was made up of oak i had wanted one but they were far too expensive actually he was having a habit of collecting things which were old so always he wanted to have such one but he couldn't get it because always he used to find each and every desk very expensive almost beyond his reach so they were far too expensive for him this one was in a bad condition the roll top in several pieces now the one that he has got or he had got once better to say was in a bad condition was not in a very good condition the roll top in several pieces so it came in many pieces one leg clumsily mended it was repaired one of its leg was repaired but not properly so clumsily mended scotch marks all down one side with burn marks so scotch marks all down one side so that very desk was having burn marks at one side it was going for very little money i thought i could restore it it would be a risk a challenge but i had to have it i paid the man and brought it back to my workroom at the back of the garage i began work on it on christmas eve as the man wanted that very much so he bought it for very little money and he started working on it he took it as a challenge to repair it but he bought it i removed the roll top completely and pulled out the drawers the 
veneer had lifted almost everywhere. It looked like water damage to me. Both fire and water had clearly taken their toll on this desk. The desk had some marks of damage and it was clear that it was destroyed by both fire and water. Actually, it was maybe kept in such a place where fire had taken the significant role for damaging it or of damaging it and water then. Maybe the house in which it was kept had burned or had caught fire and the desk was kept in it in which the water was thrown afterwards proving that very little desk damaged with both their impact. The last drawer was stuck fast. So, it was somehow tight over there. I tried all I could to ease it out gently. The writer had tried his best to remove it, to make it smooth, to ease it. But he couldn't do. In the end, I used brute force. So, he had to use his complete force. His force extremely to take that out. I struck it sharply with the side of my fist. And the drawer flew open to reveal a shallow space underneath a secret drawer. There was something in there. He could spot something was there in that very drawer. I reached in and took out a small black tin box. He took out a tin box which was black in color. Cello taped to the top of it was a piece of lined note paper. Cello taped to the top of it. Actually, it was having on its top a kind of seal. So it was cello taped. It was sealed with a cello tape on its top. And written on it in shaky handwriting, Jim's last letter received on January 25th 1915 or better to say 25th of January 1915. It was considered as someone's last letter and the name was also there, Jim's last letter. To be buried with me when the time comes. I knew as I did it that it was wrong of me to open the box 
but curiosity got the better of my scruples it usually does so curiosity is such a thing curiosity is such an inherent characteristic of any person that it leads to mistake or mistakes so he couldn't hold himself from interfering or better to say in viewing or in seeing someone's personal thing so curiosity got the better of my scruples means feelings scruples over here feelings that make you hesitate to do something wrong inside the box there was an envelope the address read mrs jim macpherson 12 copper beaches bridport dorset i took out the letter and unfolded it it was written in pencil and dated at the top 26th of december 1914 so there was something inside the box and there was an envelope in was it was written mrs jim macpherson 12 copper beaches bridport dorset i took out the letter and unfolded it it was written in pencil and dated at the top 26th of december 1914 means the letter was dated or was written perhaps on that date and it was addressed it was given to mrs Jim Macpherson maybe from his own husband Mr Jim so let's see what happens the next and that we are going to see in our next video thank you